कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की इन द न्यूज टू नाइट प्राइम मिनिस्टर कुमेंस इलेक्शन ऑफिस गेट योर फैक्ट राइट ऑपोजिशन टोल्ड एंड फाइक एक्स रोल डिफेंडेड इन पार्लियामेंट From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nani. Bulam Nakafiji, Prime Minister Voreng Mbani Marama says the last two elections have been the only true, free, fair, and genuine elections in Fiji. Debating the joint report on the 2014 general election, Mbani Marama praised the 2013 constitution for guaranteeing equal votes of equal value. He says there are no forms of discrimination along the lines of gender, religion, or ethnicity. The Prime Minister says Fiji never had genuine representation in the old electoral framework. They were shackled by their backward notions of ethnic supremacy. It was undemocratic. It was unjust. It entrenched class and privilege. The Prime Minister adds that Fijians have shown their faith in the electoral system twice over in 2014 and 2018. They have faith that their votes and their voices matter equally. And they have used both to choose their government twice. Mr. Speaker, they have chosen the government I lead. Make our people come out and vote. Make it user friendly. I'm, I'm happy, Honorable Speaker, when I presented to the committee that in 2022, we at least will have the symbols of the party, the, the photograph of the, of, of, the, of, the, of the candidates, and their number. Baini Marama says the Fijian Elections Office and the Electoral Commission have the government's full support. They must have the staff, they must have the training, and the technical capability and capacity. This system has given you 21 seats. Why are you knocking it? It's given you an opportunity to sit here and make your voices heard. The next election is due in 2022. Prime Minister Voreng Mbani Marama says how Fiji First spends its parliamentary grant is no business of the Social Democratic Liberal Party and its leader William Ngavoka. Ngavoka questioned in parliament what Fiji First does with the funding because Sudelpa has been told the money can only be used for parliamentary purposes. Mbani Marama replied that his party knows how to use its money. The Prime Minister also revealed in Parliament that opposition leader Ratunenga Malalambalavu has also refused to release his parliamentary grant to the Sodelpa office. We are told on how to use the funding. It's only for parliamentary purposes. We wonder if the same instructions have been given to Fiji first. I, I wanted to tell him there's none of his business. Um, he should worry about uh, their money, which is stuck. Because of uh, Rambuka, he knows that. Every everyone in that group knows that. Internal dispute, Mr. Speaker, is the cause of them not having money. Acting Attorney General Fayaz Koya has called on opposition members to get their facts right before making any comments on the COVID-19 vaccination registration. National Federation Party leader Professor Biman Prasad had claimed that Fijians without a birth certificate are paying around $15 to get one for registration. Koya has clarified that a birth certificate was never a requirement. Kritika Kumar reports. The NFP leader suggested that the Ministry of Health should look at alternatives. I suggest that um, the ministry look at the availability of other uh, IDs like passport, uh, uh, elect election uh, registration cards. Acting Attorney General Fayaz Koya says the COVID-19 vaccination checklist clearly outlines that the birth registration number is needed and not the actual birth certificate. All you need is your birth registration number, and and for information's sake. This, all of this is actually being disseminated on the necessary websites. Meanwhile, Health Minister Dr. Efremi Wangai Nambete confirmed 6,278 individuals in the three divisions have received their first jab of COVID-19 AstraZeneca vaccine and no adverse results were recorded. Some individuals develop mild side effects which are temporary and adequately managed with symptomatic care which included antipyretics such as Panadol and hydration. Dr. Wangai Nambete says the next batch of vaccines will target the rest of the healthcare workers in the country, including private practitioners. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. 
The government will continue to ensure that corruption-related cases are thoroughly investigated and that those who indulge in corrupt practices face the full brunt of the law. Prime Minister Voreng Mbani Marama says FICAC investigations are independent. Pranita Prakash has more. Opposition MP Ro Filipe Tuisawau claims FICAC is being used as a tool of oppression and victimization. The last one which I raised questions the independence of the Constitutional uh, Officers Commission, where they accepted that letter from FICA on the performance of uh, the Secretary General to Parliament, Vinyana Namosimalua. They shouldn't have accepted that because the person who assesses performance of the Secretary General is the Honorable is the Mr. Speaker. And why did FICA interfere? The Prime Minister clarified that the decision was unanimous that also included the leader of opposition. Uh, I don't know what's so special about uh, Honorable Tisawau, that they can stand here and not say he doesn't accept the, con the, the constitution of this uh, nation. He should, uh, before he comes to work tomorrow, look at himself in the mirror and say, I'm a man. I'm not a hypocrite. I will not go. I will resign because I don't recognize this constitution. That's what they should do. The Prime Minister stresses that no one except a court of law has any influence or any say with respect to criminal proceedings brought to the courts by FICAC. Baini Marama says the continuous rise in corruption calls for concern, adding that this is why FICAC was established in the first place. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. One of the major focuses of the government is turning maritime resource owners into business owners. Prime Minister Voreng Mbani Marama says with the COVID-19 pandemic, the government will seize every opportunity to, sp to spur sustainable domestic growth. Sainia Nimboila reports. Through initiatives by the Fisheries Ministry, the Prime Minister says customary fishing ground owners are able to collectively collaborate and realize their business potentials. This government has done more to protect the sacred rights of the Itoke than any other. And we have done more for Itoke fishing ground owners with regards to the equitable distribution of rental income for Ingolingoli, royalty payments and widening access rights to waters. The Fisheries Ministry has so far supported 230 maritime protected areas in an effort to raise awareness on the harvesting of maritime resources. This was achieved through the support rendered by the customary fishing right owners who gave their consent, which enabled the MPAs to be legally protected through demarcation. Opposition MP Salote Ranrondo says the fisheries minister need to ask for an increase in their budget allocation this year. We'll uh, put on the house, on the floor, the recommendation for an increase in the budget for the Ministry of Fisheries. And the least he can do is support, stand up and support that recommendation. Koray Labisau says the ministry worked in collaboration with relevant stakeholders in 2016 and 2017 to ensure that fishing ground owners have the relevant support needed to capitalize on their marine resources. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Up ahead, Mba Hospital to open later this year. And trade between Fiji and the U.S. impressive. By today, deliver Radio Fiji both Radio Fiji roasted down. Radio Fiji two, desh ki dharkan. Welcome back. Thousands of Fijians in Ba and nearby areas can expect the commissioning of the new hospital in the second half of the year. This confirmation was made in Parliament by Health Minister Dr. Ifiremi Wangainabete when asked on the status of the new hospital. Apenisa Wangairandovu has the details. The healthcare Fiji chief is in the country overlooking the progress of the partnership with Aspen Medical Limited. The uh, COVID-19 pandemic caused major dis disruptions including the ability of them to actually begin last year as the CEO and her staff were not, were not able to come through. As such, operational details are currently being discussed with government and HCF. Dr. Wangenambete says the demand in employment opportunities will also be created when the new hospital opens. 
The health minister says the current staff from Bar and Lautoka hospitals will not lose their jobs when Aspen Medical takes over. Employment opportunities exist in areas such as laundry services, catering services, water services, and other services will also be explored. The minister also explained in parliament why the beds from the Bar Hospital were moved to the new Navosa Subdivisional Hospital. Can the minister clarify whether equipment, hospital equipment were moved from Bar Hospital? We prepared that hospital with consultation with, PP, with our PPP partner, HCF, as a possible isolation facility. That's why we took those new beds and put it there. Dr. Wanganambete says there were no attempts to make a public show in commissioning the new Navosa Subdivisional Hospital as it will provide critical services. Apinis Wangarandobu, FBC News. One of Fiji's largest export partners, the United States, is exploring ways for businesses based in the U.S. to help grow the Fiji brand. United States Embassy Charged Affairs Tony Grubel today held a video conference with more than 50 American investors and companies introducing them to Fiji's export sector. Pranita, Pranita Prakash reports there are now hundreds of firms, big and small, exporting to the U.S. A lot of interest has been shown in kava, chocolates, turmeric and ginger. The American companies are looking for boutique products for um, you know, that sell in the higher end market. And we're wanting to emphasize that Fiji is a um, great source for that. And then we also found that there was a lot of interest when we mentioned garments, uh, you know, like textiles and garments seem like a lot of the consulting firms were really excited about that. The Fiji USA Business Council president hopes the conference will pave way for increased exports. And there's also a strong interest from the U.S. as well uh, on investing in Fiji uh, as well as um, sharing their services. In 2019, the United States exported $103 million worth of goods and services to Fiji and imported $246 million worth of goods and services. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic and global economic slowdown, exports to United States only dipped to $224 million. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. As the multi-million dollar drug trial against Joshua Aziz Rahman continued in the Suva High Court, Rahman's recorded caution interview was compared with its written police transcript. Detective Corporal Avinish Dutt testified that with a dog unit present during the 2019 raid, they found a parcel in a drawer of the master bedroom at Rahman's Dombati home in Nasinu. Tests later showed the package is... is uh, Excuse me, later showed uh, the package was alleged to be 39.5 kgs of cocaine. The interviewing officer told the court they also found a yellow notebook and pages from that notebook. The notebook and pages were tendered as evidence. However, Rahman's defense lawyer objected on the grounds that they'd not been in the list of evidence they had received. The High Court judge overruled the objection. The trial continues in the Suva High Court. The Pacific Network on Globalization and a few other NGOs today launched their campaign to ban deep sea mining with a collective agreement on deep sea mining not needed, not wanted and not consented. They hope to draw a blue line against the issue. Details with Philippe Naikaso. These civil society organizations hope to sign more people for their campaign to ban deep sea mining. The call to ban DSM is really a call to protect our ocean. They believe even at an experimental stage, deep sea mining is already proving harmful to Pacific communities, their livelihoods, cultural practices, and their well-being. Those that have believed in this course to safeguard our ocean for the well-being of our children. The campaign has so far received more than 200 endorsements from Fiji and across the Pacific. However, they're hoping that those in the leadership positions hear their plea and ban deep sea mining. We called on our own governments to recognize transboundary harm. The ocean does not recognize jurisdictions and called for the principle of do no harm. Over the next few months, they'll be raising awareness on deep sea mining and its long-term impacts. Philip and I, Kaso, FBC News. 
A year later and our cinemas have finally got a chance to attract patrons in big numbers with the release of Godzilla vs. Kong. COVID-19 did not spare the movie industry and while Fiji resumed screenings late last year, the wait has been a long one for most moviegoers to watch a blockbuster. This has also come as an opportune time for cinema owners to re-employ staff who were let go last year, Dipesh Kumar reports. Only the public, but also the cinema owners. Because our team is very, very excited, and they're all excited about uh, uh, planning, you know, the sessions and allocating this cinema screen. The excitement has trickled down to the public, who have stormed to the cinemas to catch two of the all-time characters on the big screen. So we already expected a, a great turnout for this particular movie and we were not disappointed. Yesterday all our uh, advanced screenings did very well. This is one of the most anticipated movies of the year and some even took time off from their other chores to be amongst the first to watch this flick. I'm very excited. I actually skipped class just to come and watch this movie. I'm sure it must be really good because everyone's really hyped about this because it's been a while since such a blockbuster movie is out right now. I'm really excited. Well, it's been, it's been a, it's like a year for me for, to watch the movie. After a year, moviegoers are finally getting a chance to watch the biggest blockbuster on the big screen. This is not only an exciting time for them, but also for the staff who are back at work due to the huge demand. Dipesh Kumar, FBC News. And time for business now with Whitney. Thanks, Edwin. Coming up in business tonight, Fiji taps into new Asian markets. And pothole patching will continue, says Minister. Stay with us. Bula FM, number two and seri. The government is in discussions with several Asian countries on future bilateral trading agreements. Responding to a question in Parliament, Minister for Trade and Commerce Fair Square said it was part of strategies to create new market opportunities. Square says Fiji is exploring obtaining observer status in the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. The RCEP consists of all the major economies of Asia as well as Australia and New Zealand. These actual discussions need careful consideration because apart from offering the biggest opportunities, sir, these countries are also our most fierce competitors. Apart from new market opportunities, regional trade agreements are also under review. Koya adds Fiji is part of a committee reviewing the rules of origin to allow Fijian-made products to be traded with Pacific Island countries. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced many companies to become innovative and Bika Buy and Company Limited is one of them. The company today opened a virtual door to its businesses, enabling customers to order and pay online. Chief Executive Viraj Kantila Lad says due to the pandemic, they had to think outside the box. The Chief Executive believes that new internet payment gateway will take their business to a new height. We are very proud that uh, our first shipment using the payment portal actually went yesterday. So our website went live and uh, the first shipment actually went yesterday and this is prior to actually the launch so that's good news. We now join Sunifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Good evening. The New Zealand dollar has been appealing to buyers for months as hopes of a coronavirus pandemic recovery boosted market sentiment amid speculation of tightening of monetary policy from central banks. However, this week's events have poured cold water on the Reserve Bank of New Zealand's interest rate hike speculation. New Zealand took action to cool its overheated housing market, and analysts believe this will dampen the chance of a more hawkish policy from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Elsewhere, the euro fell against the US dollar and could soon face a plunge below $1.18 as the third wave of COVID-19 threatens the outlook for the economic bloc. An unexpected expansion of business activity did little to brighten the mood in the midst of renewed COVID-19 lockdowns. Meanwhile, the U.S. dollar hit a fresh four-month high versus the euro due to the U.S. pandemic response and potential U.S. tax hikes. That's all from HFC Bank for now. 
Vinaka. Yeah, the local exchange rates as said early this morning. It was a mixed day for the Fiji dollar while it dropped against the Chinese won, the US dollar and the Japanese yen. The Sangamoli showed gains against the Aussie and Kiwi dollars, the PNG Kina and the Euro. On the commodities market, the price of oil jumped to over $60 per barrel. Gold was up slightly at $1,734 per ounce and silver closed down at $25.12 an ounce. The Fiji Roads Authority will continue to patch potholes until they have the funds and contractors to rehabilitate badly hit roads. Infrastructure Minister Chone Osumate says unfortunately, several roads in Fiji need rehabilitation as they have gone past their service lifespan. Kelly Vazala reports. Could the Honourable Minister explain? Questions were raised in Parliament on the increase in the number of potholes. Why, with all those, we still have so many potholes and uh, even lava holes? What we need to do with FRA, because they don't have all the contractors and the funds at all times to re rehabilitate all roads, they will have a planned program to rehabilitate some, and those that they are not going to re rehabilitate immediately, they try just to patch them up until they come to the time when they can rehabilitate. Chani Samati earlier this week was also questioned on the condition of the roads between Ba and Tavua. Uh, that particular stretch of road, FRA has got a plan to get the contractor on board by the month of May. So in the meantime, what they do, before they await that time, they completely rehabilitate the road. That means they rip everything out, that they fix the whole road. In the meantime, they will do some small patch-ups on, on, the, on the potholes that are there. The minister says the intention over the long term is to eradicate potholes completely and build roads that are up to better standard, which will take time. Kelly Vatala, FBC News. And that's it from business tonight. We now join Tale with the latest in sports. Thanks, Sydney. Good evening ahead in sports. We have the day one action of the Murray's Sevens. And in Ivanuatu plays a boost for the Whites. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Ini from Raki Raki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Defending Murray's Thunder 21 champions, Dominion Brothers had a good start to its title defense campaign. The side defeated Black Heron 14-0 in its first pool match at the ANZ Stadium in Suva. Sikitin Ronrolangi and Ionwane Suwe dived over for the try lane for the Dominion Brothers. Try scorer Sivui says Black Heron tested the team and they are expecting the game to intensify as the game progresses. We made a lot of mistakes during our first game and we know we will need to end them before our next match. As defending champions, we are expecting all teams to be coming for us. Former Fiji 7 speed star Vilimoni Dalasau was shouting the instructions from the sideline to his J brothers Sorkomba side on day one of the 45th Fiji Beta Murray 7 today. The man who was dubbed the Flash on due to his electrifying speed and magical footworks is coaching the Sorkomba under 21 team. The team is made up of players from Sorkomba district. These include Sasa Talerake, Wanda Wanda Natunuku and Sorkomba village. I'm trying to pull the interest of the young people to get them away from drugs, from the streets and other stuff to get them into rugby and to develop them and for them to make the living out of rugby as myself, as, I've, as I'm an example to them. The Holy Cross rugby team has come a long way since its first since it first participated in the Fiji Beta Murray Sevens two years ago, after bowing out in the elimination rounds last year, the Taviuni Bay side is aware of the competition they will face during the three-day tournament. Karleni Tavi with the details. Made up of all the top sevens teams from Taviuni, Holy Cross will be one of the top contenders in the Murray Sevens. Last year we reached the elimination round. This year, we have prepared well and we will be out to create upsets in our pool match. Majority of the players who were part of the squad last year have left. Getting the players ready for the Murray Sevens was a tough task, seeing that they are a very young team, but we hope that all our hard work pays off. 
Island Live USA Rewasa, which is also a Taveuni based team, aims to finish the competition in the top four. We've been preparing for the last two months from the Super 7 series last week, but we still need more time, especially on working on our defense. Holy Cross will meet Ratu Felice at 8.55 a.m. tomorrow, while Island Live USA Rewasa will face IMAT New Exodus Vaturu Babas at 8.55 a.m. Both matches will be played at ANZ Stadium in Suva. Karlini Tavi, FBC Sports. Leaving their families back in Sawani village in Mbua to compete in the Marist Sevens was not easy for the Mbua K9 barbarians, but the players were determined as they are excited about their big break in Sevens rugby. The three week preparation came with challenges. It was tough preparing for the tournament as we continue to deal with the aftermath of two recent tropical cyclones and the floods. But this did not dampen the spirit of the players who were hoping to showcase their talent in Fiji's biggest sevens tournament. Uh, the Mbua based team heads into the tournament with a bigger goal. While we wish to give our boys the exposure playing against top teams, we want to show them that there is more to life than just hanging around, smoking and peer pressure. The team aims to bring smiles to every individual back in Sawani. We want to give our families back home and those who will be at the stadium tomorrow supporting us a reason to celebrate. The Mbua K9 Barbarians will face Fire Rugby in its first pool match at 9.32 a.m. at the ANZ Stadium in Suva. The Sony Valu under-21 side, like any other team coming into the Fiji Bita Mari 7s competition with a purpose, to make the people of Sikituru in Nandi proud. Sony Valu is the first 7s team from the village. Karlin Tavi reports. The Sony Valu under-21 team faced a lot of financial difficulties coming into the competition. Uh, for us, uh, first, like, uh, the first difficulty that we came through is uh, financial. Uh, like uh, this team, uh, uh, the lucky thing is uh, like uh, we reach this place uh, through the hard work of the parents, the families, and uh, especially the one of the uh, Sunwar. The Nandi based side took a risk of fielding younger players in the first outing of the Mari Sevens. Uh, by this time, we bring all these young guys here to, to bring them in this uh, big uh, competition like that uh, to expose them so they can achieve uh, some of uh, their things. Sonivalu player Metu Sela Tawake wants to carry on his father, Rusiate Sokuru's legacy on the rugby field. To bring Mohada, still a little boy, uh, yeah, so I can be part of the Fiji national team. Sonivalu put up a strong 15 minutes performance to beat Maris 21 7 in the competition at ANZ Stadium in Suva today. Karleni Tavi, FBC Sports. Defending Murray Sevens women's champion, the Stradis team got off to a shaky start today at the NZ Stadium in Suva. They opened its account on a losing note, falling a 12-19 to the Police Blue Diamonds Eagles women. A show and a go. The loss was a wake-up call for the defending champion. We learned a lot from our loss in the first game. We had a lot of weaknesses. We had communication problems on the field, so we restructured and entered the second match a much stronger team. It's been tough. Uh, not all teams are easy to face. Not like before, but now girls are developed. And yeah, all teams are pretty good. The team was only able to retain a few winning players from last year. Despite losing a number of players, I have great confidence in the coming weeks that they will be able to get the job done. The young bunch is optimistic of making the knockout stages and defending its title for the second year in a row. The inclusion of two Nivanuatu players has further boosted the defending National League champion of the Suva football team. Alex Seniel and Azariel Zoromon joined the team in training yesterday after completing their two weeks quarantine on Tuesday. The two players bring a wealth of experience to the capital side. Well, definitely we, uh, we needed strikers, you know, um, so it's good they brought uh, more depth to us, our team. Um, for Suva it's a blessing. Uh, I've got a lot of experience uh, through international uh, games representing Vanuatu and uh, Alex uh, he's not uh, new to this uh, game plan in uh, Fiji since he was playing for Lotoka. 
Fans will see Sormon and Saniel in action for Suva against Nandi on Sunday. Nothing confirmed yet, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see them. Uh, they just come in yesterday out of quarantine, you know, they're not uh, too keen to play this week, you know, and uh, we respect their decision because uh, they're not physically fit. They've been away from football for a while. For the players, the new inclusion means more competition for a place in the match day squad. We have less defenders and uh, there's more attackers. Uh, with these two players, uh, everyone will be fighting for their spot. Uh, but uh, to see the good side of the team, uh, it's about helping the team win through game by game. Suva takes on Nandi in round four of the Digicel Premier League on Sunday at 3 p.m. at Bridge Charles Park. In play of the day, even the rainy weather could not dampen the spirit of players in the Maris the Sevens as they showcase quality rugby. Take a look at this stunning try by Police Blue Diamond Eagles women. It's there for Police. They swing it out well. Who will make the first break? Here it comes. Can she pick it up? Yes, she can. And the try is there for police Philo Rambakele. That's it from Sports Tonight in New Media. Show me profit surges, but cheap shortage hits. This and more coming up. Hello here, Tawa. We love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. And she's here now with tonight's weather. Hello to you and welcome to the weather world. Conditions are not really appealing as you can see outside. Mari Sevens has resumed after a bit of hold up due to wet weather conditions. I know you're really looking forward to watch or to play, but be mindful. And also do not drive along flooded areas. We do not want any mishaps to happen. Now let's quickly hop on to the Western Division. The clouds are breaking with rain clouds circulating. Eastwards from Back Harbour to Suva, heavy showers currently trending, low-lying areas possibly to flood up, so keep out and away. And up north, more showers rolling in, be mindful when you step out. At sea, southeast winds 25 to 30 knots, rough seas. Now turning to the tides, low tide at 10.39pm with high tide at 4.35am. Sunrise, that is if the clouds are clear, it will be at 6 11. For tomorrow, more showers to draw near us. However, the afternoon to evening looks little clear. Tomorrow's temps, all centers will be cool in the lower 30 degrees. And looking further into Saturday, showers are surrounding the two islands. That's what is on the forecast for now. That's all the weather news from my end. Have a warm evening. It's back to Edwin. Okay, Angie. In Fijian Pulse tonight, we ask, do you know the symptoms of tuberculosis? TV, they just look for pain, crack off, problem in the blood, and backache pain, fever, you'll feel. Signs of TV, just you feel like coughing too much. Sometimes you cough, blood gonna come out, and you have, I mean, back pain, fever, all that kind of thing. The symptoms are severe coughing and fever. Uh, I don't know the symptoms of it. And recapping our main stories, Prime Minister commends Elections Office. Get your facts right, opposition told, and FICAC's role defended in Parliament. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, to our poll question. This week we are asking, do you know what a pyramid scheme is? Visit our FBC News website to answer. And on to our shot of the day. 
This was taken from Field 40 in Lotoka by Kushal Sandeep Chand. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts, including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Mudamanda. And I'm from Lotoka and I love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.